Hello friends, today I am going to share with you some of the details of the energy from chemicals. So what are energy changes? How do energy changes take place? Usually this you can see uh, in the breaking and making of bonds. As you know during a chemical reaction, bonds in the reactants will be broken and new bonds are made in the products. We will see the details later. So this is a point you have to remember. You need some energy to break something, right? So similarly here also, if you want to break some bonds, the energy is required. So energy is absorbed to break the bonds. That means the absorption of energy. So it's taken in, it's entering. So we can otherwise call that as an endothermic process. So we can say bond breaking is an endothermic process. Similarly, when new bonds are formed, energy is released. So we, we call that as bond making. So release, releasing means it is given out. It's going outside, so it's exiting, energy is exiting. So you can relate the term as an exothermic process. So bond breaking is an endothermic process and bond making is an exothermic process. But while bond breaking, energy is absorbed, while bond making, energy is released. If more heat energy is released when making the bonds than was taken in, the reaction is said to be exothermic. If more heat energy was taken in when breaking the bonds than was released, then the reaction is endothermic. So this gives an idea that how can you relate or how can you say whether the complete reaction or the final reaction is exothermic or endothermic that is based on the difference if more heat energy is released than taken in then it's exo if more heat energy is taken in than released then it's endo so here it's uh, shown the difference between exothermic and endothermic reactions as you can see, in exothermic reactions, energy is transferred to the surroundings from the system. So if the energy is transferred to the surrounding, the surrounding temperature increases. And this energy, as you know, it's transferred from a system to the surrounding. That means the energy change of the system falls. That means wherever the reaction is taking place, that system energy falls. So energy change is negative and it's given to the surrounding. Examples for exothermic reactions are combustion, oxidation, neutralization. These are all exothermic reactions examples. And uh, what about endothermic? In endothermic reactions, energy is taken in from the surrounding. So the temperature of surrounding decreases, but the temperature of the system increases. Therefore, we can say that this energy is transferred to the chemical energy store of the chemical system. And so the energy of the system increases. This means that the energy is positive. Examples of endothermic reactions, electrolysis, thermal decomposition reactions, and the first stages of photosynthesis. These are all typical endothermic reactions. Here comes the energy level diagrams. This is showing the energy and progress of reaction in both exo and endothermic reaction. The first picture shows you exothermic. This is energy level diagram. So you can see the difference in the level of reactants and products. In exothermic, reactants are having more energy than the products. Therefore, why it's exo? Because energy is released, excess energy is released. And the second picture, second graph shows you the energy of reactants is lesser than energy of products. So energy is absorbed by the reactants to reach the products. Products are having higher energy levels. So that's the energy level diagrams. And this is the energy profile diagrams. In this diagram, you will see one more thing here, activation energy. Reactants going to activated complex and then to a products. 
how how does it get activate how does it reach activated complex by gaining activation energy so what do you mean by activation energy it's a minimum energy that colliding particles must have in order to react so if that energy is there only then reactants react and they can form the products here also the difference between the reactant level and products level is same as energy level diagrams reactants higher energy for exothermic and reactants lower energy for endothermic and what is activation energy the energy from the reactants up to the re activated complex up to the peak that difference is the activation energy and in the re exothermic reaction he extra heat is given out to the surrounding that means the arrow is showing downwards while in the second picture the heat is taken in by the reactants to reach the products so the arrow shows or points upwards and uh, that's the energy profile diagrams the next we deals with bond energy each chemical bond has a specific bond energy associated with it this is the amount of energy required to break the bond or the amount of energy given out when the bond is formed as i mentioned a while ago when a bond is broken the energy is required so that much amount of energy which is required to break a bond is called bond energy and when a bond is formed energy is been released and that much amount of energy is which is given out is called bond energy now let's see the bond energy calculations the steps are given here first of all you add together the bond energies for all the bonds in the reactants this is the energy taken in second step add together the bond energies for all the bonds in the products this is the energy which is given out now you can calculate the energy change and how do you calculate energy in minus energy out that's how you need to calculate the bond energy so let's see the examples here first example is showing here for an exothermic reaction hydrogen and chlorine react to form hydrogen chloride gas as you can see i have written here hh plus cl cl gives 2 hcl uh, you also have to write like this in order to see the bonds clearly so there is one hh bond one cl cl bond and two hcl bond that's been clear now the bond and the bond energy values will be provided to you in the question so you don't worry about that you don't need to buy hard the values just take the values which is provided there so what is energy in energy in as we know it's for the reactants there are two reactants here hh and clcl so hh bond is 436 and uh, clcl bond is 243 so we are adding that you get a value that's the energy which is taken in and the second step is add all the products energy out so 2 times hcl hcl bond is 432 so 2 times 2 times hcl so 2 times 432 it's giving you 864 so you got the energy which is taken in and energy which is given out now the energy change is energy in minus energy out so 679 minus 864 is giving you minus 185 kilojoules per mole and this is the negative value since the energy change is negative we know that the react in the reaction if the energy falls that means the system is falling down system is giving the heat to the surrounding so this is an exothermic reaction where the energy is released so whenever you get a negative value as the answer for the ultimate answer or the final answer then it's understood that the reaction is exothermic another example shows endothermic reaction is given here hydrogen bromide decomposes to form hydrogen and bromine 2hbr gives hh plus br br so here in the product side you have 2hbr so when you take energy when you calculate energy in you have to do two times the bond of hbr value which is 366 Uh, which is equal to 732 and energy out is the uh, product side hh plus brbr 
so there are two products hh and brbr you have to add both and you will get a value finally the last step is energy change which is energy in minus energy out so you get a positive 103 kilojoules per mole so the energy change is positive positive means the heat is taken in by the reactants is more than the heat that is released so if the heat taken in is more then it's an endothermic reaction system is gaining heat so temperature of system is increasing for an endothermic reaction and temperature of the surrounding decreases because temperature heat is taken from the surrounding so surrounding temperature decreases because all the heat is taken up or taken in by the reaction so that's for endothermic reaction now let's see some of the energy which we get from fuels what is meant by a fuel a fuel is a substance which releases energy when burned the efficiency of a fuel refers to how much energy is released per unit amount this can be per gram or per mole so that's the efficiency of a fuel example of a fuel cell is the hydrogen fuel cell why it's called a hydrogen fuel because a hydrogen can be burnt and it can be produce energy it can be used to produce energy so that's why it's a fuel what are the uses of hydrogen as a fuel in the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell actually the reaction is the formation of water what's happening the first step is oxidized or hydrogen getting oxidized that what do you mean by oxidation reaction with oxygen so hydrogen reacts with oxygen within the fuel cell to produce a potential difference overall reaction in a hydrogen fuel cell involves the oxidation of hydrogen to produce water so that's a reaction simple reaction hydrogen plus oxygen giving water so this is a reaction happening inside a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell where you will be getting energy that's why we use hydrogen as a fuel now let's see some of the advantages and disadvantages of fuel cells advantages they do not produce any pollution they produce more energy per kilogram than either petrol or diesel no power is lost on transmission as there are far fewer moving parts than in an internal combustion engine Fuel cells are quiet and lightweight compared to combustion engines. Disadvantages: Materials used in producing fuel cells are expensive. High pressure tanks are needed to store the oxygen and hydrogen in sufficient amounts. Fuel cells are affected by low temperatures becoming less efficient. Hydrogen is expensive to produce and store. These are some of the sources of energy natural gas which is called mainly methane and petroleum or crude oil are the sources of energy the details about this will be taught in the next chapters so thank you so much for watching this video